Topic No. 3 Five months ago I reported that Russia had begun deploying an astonishing new intelligence weapon. These are the organic robotoids, artificial robot-like living creatures that simulate human beings. By introducing the robotoids, the Russians were able to make a shambles of the Bolshevik plans then in progress. Preparations were moving fast for a new Bolshevik revolution here in the United States, but the Russian robotoids stopped it cold. Even more importantly, the joint Bolshevik and Zionist Middle East war plan was thwarted, at least for the time being. This prevented the Bolsheviks from going ahead with the rest of their plan for an American nuclear first strike against Russia. Since that time, the Russians have been pressing forward with their robotoid takeover of the United States. Within weeks, the year-and-a-half SALT II stalemate vanished and the treaty was signed in Vienna, and for months now major surprises have been peppering the news which are the direct result of Russia's robotoid invasion. I alerted you to watch for these in AUDIO LETTER No. 46 and have commented on them as they have taken place. In Topic No. 2, I pointed out the continuation of the Senator Church robotoid strategy to undo the Cuba crisis and save SALT II, and this month there continue to be important new developments in Russia's robotoid takeover here. A very important case has to do with America's new relations with Red China. In 1978, the Carter Administration was in a state of panic over Russia's newly deployed Crushing military power in space. The so-called China Card policy was the result. America suddenly dumped Taiwan and recognized Red China last December. But the Russians are working fast to unravel the ties between the United States and China. Russia is determined to reestablish her own working relationship with China. This month Talks are continuing between Russian and Chinese officials in Moscow with this goal in view, and suddenly, just this month, a Federal District Judge has ruled that it is illegal for President Carter to breach the treaty with Taiwan. Instead, he says, Congress must be consulted. Only last June the same judge had refused to rule in the case, but since then Russia's robotoid takeover here has changed things, and so out of the blue has come the surprise thunderbolt of this ruling. It could hardly be better calculated to shake Chinese confidence in the United States, and it comes at the very moment when Red Chinese negotiators are staring across the table at their Russian counterparts in Moscow. In every possible way, the Russians are trying to make use of their robotoid advantage while they can, because there is a lesson which runs throughout military history, and the Russians know it well. That lesson is that when one side in a conflict develops a new weapon, the other side will soon counter it with a similar weapon. So a new weapon can decide a conflict only if it is used quickly. In AUDIO LETTERS 46 and 47, I reported that robotoid technology in the United States is far behind that of Russia, but now the Bolshevik and Zionist enemies of Russia have achieved their own surprise. The Rothschild interests which control both movements have for many years been deeply involved in biological research of all kinds. They have not succeeded in learning the secrets of the Russian robotoids, but they have achieved success with something similar. They are called synthetic automatons, or simply synthetics. A Rothschild synthetic is similar to a Russian robotoid in certain ways. Each is an artificial life form designed to simulate a human being, but synthetics also differ from robotoids in important ways. For one thing, they are generated by radically different techniques. Both utilize genetic samples from actual humans as their starting point, but beyond that everything is different. The Russian process 
is a close relative of recombinant DNA techniques involving bacteria. The details of the process are shrouded in great secrecy, but it enables robotoids to be generated from scratch very rapidly. The raw shield process, by contrast, does not start from scratch. Instead, certain tissues extracted from cattle are the starting point. The synthetic is then generated in a process that changes the genetic makeup in order to simulate a person being copied. It is the outgrowth of a discovery made 20 years ago in France. The experiment involved two species of ducks called Khaki Campbells and White Pecans. The landmark duck experiment of 1959 was reported in a book titled The Biological Time Bomb by Gordon Rattray Taylor. It was published in 1968 by the New American Library, New York, New York. Taylor described the experiment in the words, quote, They had extracted DNA from the cells of the Khaki Campbells and had injected it into the White Pecans, thinking that just possibly the offspring of the latter might show some character derived from Khaki Campbells. To their astonishment, the actual ducks they injected began to change. Their white feathers darkened, and their necks began to take on the peculiar curve which is a mark of the Khaki Campbell." Unquote. Beginning with that clue of two decades ago, the raw shield synthetic process has been developed in secret, and now, my friends, synthetics are beginning to appear on the scene. Earlier this month, on October 9, Carter Robotoid No. 18 was scheduled to hold a news conference. Three days earlier, Brezhnev No. 2 had made his proposals in East Berlin for military reductions in Europe. Robotoid 18 had been programmed to react positively to the proposals, but instead our alleged President said, quote, I think it's an effort designed to disarm the willingness or eagerness of our allies adequately to defend themselves." Unquote. The Russians were dumbfounded. This was a fresh Robotoid. Surely the recurring instability problem could not be showing up this fast. After the news conference, he was bundled off for examination and testing, and that produced the second surprise. It was not Robotoid 18 at all, but a synthetic. The synthetic was then transported to Novosibirsk for further study. There Robotoid scientists were able to establish an important and unpleasant fact. The source of the genetic material used in generating the synthetic had been Robotoid 18, and whereas the Russian Robotoids vary somewhat from one to another, the synthetic was virtually identical in appearance to the missing Robotoid 18. But an important favorable fact was also discovered. The synthetics are inferior mentally to the Robotoids. It is not yet clear how fast the Bolsheviks will be able to deploy their synthetics, but the guerrilla war between the Raw Shield Synthetics and the Russian Robotoids is already beginning. The Carter Synthetic on October 9 was a shock to the Russians, and yet they have known for months that the synthetics would soon appear. For that reason, the Russians are beginning to re-emphasize their other weapons in their battle against the Bolsheviks here in America. As of now, they are beginning to use geophysical warfare again as part of their overall campaign to whittle away at the danger of nuclear war. On October 16, Chairman Hua of China was in France trying to buy Mirage fighters, among other things, but the Russians sent a clear message to both France and China that they should forget the whole idea. That day a Russian geophysical warfare weapon was set off in an undersea trench in the Mediterranean off Nice, France. It produced a sudden ebb tide followed by a tidal wave that smashed 36 miles of the French Riviera. It was a new experience for the French, but not for Chairman Hua. The Russians used geophysical warfare to give him a message a year ago, as I reported in AUDIO LETTER No. 38. But for us Americans it is now coming closer to home. 
In AUDIO LETTER No. 41 I reported the planting of 46 bombs underground for earthquake generation in California. During the past few months the Russians have been setting off preliminary quakes with gradually rising strength. On August 6, the strongest quake in 68 years, 5.9 on the Richter scale, shook San Francisco, and this month, on October 15, a Richter 6.4 quake was set off in Southern California. The Russians are becoming convinced that their robotoids will not be enough to stop the Bolsheviks. As I have reported in recent months, they have been slowed by troubles with the robotoids, and now they are faced with the added problem of the Rothschild synthetics. And so, rather than let the Bolsheviks regroup and launch nuclear war, the Russians are turning once again to geophysical warfare, including weather warfare. The West Coast is a prime target because of the heavy concentrations of aerospace and military activity there. The Kremlin is debating whether the time has come after all to unleash the great man-made catastrophe on America's West Coast. Until next month, God willing, this is Dr. Beter. Thank you, and may God bless each and every one of you.